RE0 episode review. Now, before I get into the review, there's something I want to talk about real quick that I didn't really notice, and I thought whoever noticed this, man, you fucking, like, you're, you're sharp. Uh, there, on, on Chibi's reviews, uh, I'm pretty sure everyone watches that, uh, there was this one commentator who had brought up, I think his name is Viejo Belgrano, I think that's what his name was, I forgot. And he, he, had, he or she mentioned that, that the foreshadowing for the fact that when, back when Puck killed uh, Betula Juice, he already had possessed Subaru when Subaru was doing that evil laugh. And Subaru had to mention, oh, I am very slothful. And he's laughing like crazy maniacally. And so he, he, he or she believes that that was probably Subaru already being possessed by Betelidris. And that was already built up to when Subaru got possessed a couple episodes later. If that's the case, if he was possessed by, uh, by Sloth back then, I'm like, that's some damn good foreshadowing if that is the case. It hasn't been, it hasn't been necessarily confirmed, but I'm pretty much 90% sure that he was possessed back then. So I'm like, fuck, that is some damn good foreshadowing. Real good. Now, in this, now, now we get into the episode review. If this episode didn't feel like as impactful or as good as previous episodes, and that doesn't mean it's bad, it's just like, Ari Zero kind of put the bar up already pretty high. So, there's basically just a couple uh, things I want to talk about. Is one, Emilia, is that I feel like she's really stressed out in the situation. And the fact, I think, in some scenes, they showed her having some kind of dream. And I think it's a dream. It looked like she was dreaming about Subaru and all the stress that he's caused and all the things that they've done together. And she wakes up and Puck realizes, oh, you got wrinkles. You know, I come over here because I'm kind of worried about you. And I think it shows that Emilia really does miss Subaru or that either that or the this whole thing with uh, being uh, the priestess is really stressing her out. But I think she really does miss Subaru and it, it, it just shows into her character that, you know, there's still something there between uh, Subaru and Emilia. You know, it's not just him and Ram. And I'm glad we're seeing more of Emilia now. But again, what, what, no Ram, man. <laughs> we can't have everything. Whatever. Another thing, too, is that... Uh, <sighs> The rest of this, uh, in the beginning of the episode, you see Subaru bringing up the fact that uh, Sloth can take or possess over people at the beginning of the episode, like right off. He does not waste time. And they mention, oh, you know, that's that's like a lost power. And they bring up that, oh, he can probably, he most likely can only do that to the fingers of his clan, to his spare bodies who are part of the witch cult. But then Subaru brings up, but I think he can possess me. And then it goes like to blank and they're, huh? And they don't show how they resolve that problem about Subaru being possess possessed by some people, by Sloth. And I think they're going to save that for the next episode because it's for build after the end of this episode. So I think that the fact that they believe that he can only take uh, over his fingers shows that maybe Subaru, it uh, shows that Subaru has some ties to the witch cult again. There's like little hints and pieces that they keep throwing in that Subaru and definitely still has ties to the witch cult somehow. Either it was a past finger or something like that. But the fact that Subaru brings in brings up that he could be possessed, that throws them off because of what? That doesn't make any sense. So that I guess that must mean that I don't think Sloth can take over someone like Wilhelm or Julius, but he can only take on Subaru, who doesn't appear to be part of the witch cult, but he probably might be somehow tied into it. Now, uh, the rest of this episode, though, is pretty much them going through the motion. Uh, it was just like Subaru figuring out what the witch cult was doing you know, they figured out how they were able to communicate with the Mitya. Uh, they caught the guy who was the traitor amongst the villain. And they pretty much own this episode. It was pretty simple. And then there was one uh, good part in, in the middle of the episode where they go to uh, Amelia's mansion. And Subaru was wearing the cloak. And it looks like the cloak that Emilia wore. And it looked like he might have stolen it. But apparently this cloak, what it does, it, it, it prevents people from recognizing you. And now we know in past episodes why now we know why Emilia kept wearing that cloak whenever she went to the village is because she didn't want people to draw attention to her. And Subaru, I guess, they didn't want her to recognize him. And I and I was thinking the whole time before they mentioned that that cloak stops recognition. I was like, Subaru, are you serious? There's no way she's gonna fall for that. But apparently, it has some kind of magic spell on it. Uh, but it looked like I thought the kid. It looked like she recognized him again. I, I let, unless he like he had them in on it. From the beginning, that he they, he wanted the children to accept Emilia, and we knew that they were gonna accept her. And I think Emilia, with this character development, it shows that she still gets hurt. Uh, it, it doesn't matter how much of a face you put, she's still gonna get hurt. And Puck mentioned that uh, no matter how many times, uh, even if you know you're gonna fall, it's still gonna hurt and bleed. 
So people can always act all strong, but deep down it hurts. You know, that's how humans are. Words do hurt us. And I'm really glad that they showed that part that she got really happy when the kids accepted her because the adults won't accept her. And so it also shows that uh, in this episode, Subaru going through the motion, you know, getting the village's help. And that's pretty much all this episode is, is them going through the motions of just owning the witch cult because Subaru knows ahead of time. So there are some scenes that I thought were good with Emilia. Uh, with the whole possession with sloth and the rest of it was pretty much it and I wasn't exactly like as pumped up as I normally am until the end when they actually like corner sloth and he has like no else to go and he pretty much goes like ape shit on them and with his hands actually there's this one funny scene where he's like chasing after Subaru and it looks like he's flying to the rest of the people but Subaru is actually he's actually being carried by the hands to go after Subaru uh, so him and Julius, they pretty much corner Sloth, or they lead him to a trap, and they're going to fight. And then, uh, uh, I forgot to mention, the way that Subaru pisses him off, he tells him, oh, you haven't gotten to that part where you're intimate with the witch. He's actually grabbed my heart, quite literally, actually. And then, like, Sloth gets mad salty. He's, like, pissed, like, no fucking way. What? How did... There's no way you can be that intimate. There's not nowhere in the gospel. What the heck? And he got mad salty, man. He was pissed. He wanted to beat the crap out of Subaru, man. He's like, and then he realizes, oh, you must be pride. And Subaru was like, oh, I'm not Subaru. I have no idea what you're pr talking about this pride stuff. I'm like, I don't know when they're going to resolve the pride thing, but I can't wait. But towards the end of this uh, episode, you see uh, Julius and uh, Subaru taking him on. And in order for them to combat the hands, because, oh, it's confirmed that Julius cannot see the hands. They both, sh like, use a spell where Julius can see what Subaru is seeing, because he's a sp uh, spirit user, and he's able to combat it with his sword. And knowing that he can see the hands, and he's a powerful motherfucker, it doesn't look too good for a uh, sloth right now. But here's the thing, how are they going to stop his spirit from leaving? But apparently, since they stopped the rest of the fingers, he has nowhere else to go. But they didn't show towards the end of this episode how Subaru was going to combat his body com being possessed. All they did was they spoke about it in the beginning and then that's it. And I think they're going to hold that for the next episode because I'm expecting for the next episode to be really good. I don't know which one this was. 23, 24? Is this the, la the last episode? Is it next week? I got to check. But next episode I'm expecting to be a lot better. This one was just going through the motion. Some good scenes. Uh, it, was, it was an okay episode. I'll give it a 3.8 out of 5 stars. Um, that's it for me. I don't think there's anything else for me to talk about. Yeah, that's it. Fantard out.